Hi, I'm Alex with Simulated Workplace, and if you've spent any time in a simulated workplace learning environment, you know that it looks a lot different than a traditional classroom. Now, one of the big differences is that Simulated Workplace has partnered with SREB, and they're fundamentally rethinking the way teaching should take place. So here's the idea. We take those experienced industry professionals who are already teaching our CTE classes, and we partner them with veteran math and English teachers in an effort to create a fuller version of the curriculum. Now the result has been truly next level educational opportunities for our students and I recently had a chance to sit down with a pair of teachers in Parkersburg who have been doing this for a while. Their story is pretty awesome so check it out. All right, so I'm here with Steve Freshour, mathematics extraordinaire, and Jim Reynolds, a uh, firefighting instructor. Gentlemen, thanks so much for taking the time to sit down and chat. Let's start with some background. Why don't you guys tell us a little bit about what you did before you started collaborating? This is my 20th year of teaching. Uh, primarily, I've been teaching high school math. I've taught everything from algebra through uh, calculus and yeah, and Jim, how about you? Okay, I've been a firefighter since the 70s, but as far as teaching goes, I started as a training officer at Parkersburg Fire Department in about 2000, and I came here permanently in 06 and been here ever since. Now, how long have you guys been in this collaborative setting? About two years, right? You've been this here is three? Our third year. Third year. Okay, so for those people who are watching who might not know, um, this is a dual credit opportunity. Can you talk a little bit about the credits that students get as a result of going and completing this program. Mm -hmm. CPR, first aid, all that kind of stuff, in addition to the Firefighter 1, Firefighter 2, EMT Basic, Hazmat Ops, and anything else I can throw at them while they're here. And, a, and they also get a math credit. And right? then because I'm able to work in this, in this classroom, mm -hmm. they will get an embedded transitional math for seniors credit. I got to ask the question that I'm sure a lot of people are wondering, math and firefighting? Right. I mean, do those things, help us understand what, what's the need for having a math teacher in a firefighting When classroom? I first heard about it, I thought, no way. There's not enough math in firefighting and EMS to, to have a credit until we started digging. So at first I was like skeptical. Right. And then at this point in time, I'm fully behind it. And it's amazing that we're able to find as much stuff as we did. There are formulas, and anywhere that I could find a formula, you know, I created some worksheets, some hypothetical scenarios, which, which kind of goes along with some of the firefighting curriculum right. that I saw in his program at the beginning. So when it, when it comes time for you guys, at least there in the beginning, when you go to sit down and without having that background in each other's subjects, what was your process? How did you start figuring out where those hidden math nuggets were in a firefighting curriculum? It was really more, at the beginning, it was really more about me just kind of saying, man, what if I did this? It was like I'd throw out an idea and, he'd, and then he would kind of educate me on the specifics and then I would kind of roll it into something that I felt the students would be able to do for an assignment. What would you say is maybe some of the main benefits, the main takeaways for a student who comes through this program, is, is, is able to see the math and the firefighting together, what are some of those big takeaways for students? Students finally realize that there's a reason to why we do the math at the regular high school. It, it allows them an opportunity to see the bigger picture where they might actually use the math. In your regular math class, you're always asking, where is this going to fit into my line of work? This, he shows you how it's going to work, so you actually understand why you're using it. Did either of you learn new things about your own discipline as a result of this collaboration? We, we were always aware, like friction loss, he talks about friction loss, and it's kind of a uh, if you say friction loss to most firefighters, they, they turn up their nose and they, they do this. We won't, like he said this morning, this means more, this means less, this means shut it off. That's all they want to know about friction loss. But like he said, different nozzles are designed to work most efficiently at a certain pressure. And if you don't operate them at that pressure, they don't work right. And I imagine there's some math things that you're like, oh yeah, the math applies here, but you maybe wouldn't have seen that in a traditional math curriculum. Arithmetic sequences, uh, water pressure exerts I think it's 0 .434 PSI per foot in a water column. So basically it's five PSI of pressure for every 10 foot. Well, every story is about 10 foot. 
So I've taught arithmetic sequences for, man, years I taught arithmetic sequences. And then this was maybe one of the first real opportunities to uh, apply it. It's really helped because there's a lot of stuff that on fire ground you don't learn and stuff that we learn in classrooms that will help me in the future to do my job properly. So what are some of the cool parts for you? What are some of the projects that you've seen students work on where you've really seen the beauty of that overlap between math and fire? I think my favorite one is uh, the foam scenarios. It looks like soap. It seals off the flammable liquids, vapors. So the students can actually figure out how much foam they need and that actually put the foam line in, in operation. Yeah, and that's a cool one because, you, you, because you deal with area. I do like the, the, the fire hydrants. It's important to know how much water is gonna come out of a fire hydrant. So there are formulas that you can use to calculate the water flow out of a fire hydrant. Right. So we'll actually be able to take the kids out and feel inside the fire hydrant to figure out what type. And depending on the type, determines one of the coefficients that belong that you plug into the formula, which also has square root of the pitot pressure and it also has a diameter squared. So there's all types of different math, you know, just in the one formula. Uh, let me kind of interrupt you there because I feel like, and there's no offense to you as a math teacher, Steve, but I feel like a lot of times math teachers kind of nerd out and get way more excited about doing math than students do. He gets excited so, about it. So what, what's that reaction when a student is signed up for a firefighting class, but then they end up having to do some hands-on math? What, what are some of the reactions that you guys see to that? So at the beginning, it was kind of, they were unsure a little bit, but I think now they're like, like hey, when are you going to come right. back in? When are you going to, come on, let's do yeah. some math. So when, when do you ever have a student ever ask right. you to do math, do. you know? With Mr. Fresh Air's course, he'll take the standard math that they use for seniors in high schools, and he'll tie in our actual work and do like real life scenarios with it, and then we'll go outside and we'll see how it can actually affect the job that we do. You, Jim, you kind of mentioned this, but you've taught this course with and without a math component. What would you say is the big difference for the students now that they've added math with the added math component? I think they understand better what we do. If they, they can apply, they say, well, we do this, and then it, he shows them the math, or we show them the math involved in it. I think they better understand some of these things we've been talking about, like why it works. I personally am among the very many that are not a fan of math, but getting involved really helps rather than having everything just uh, in a book and writing it down and then moving on the next week. Like in the classroom you just sit there and you're bored and in this classroom you're having fun, he's being energetic and then you go out and actually practice it. But as educators we need to be able to monitor student learning. So what are some of the metrics by which you guys assess student learning? Do you guys give tests? How, how do you gauge whether or not they're actually learning the material? I have do two ways. I don't give a lot of written tests. I give enough but a lot of ours is active hands-on stuff. Muscle memory is a term they like to use. Don't do it till you get it right, but do it till you can't get it wrong. More muscle memory, it'll help. Because when we learn it, we'll learn it, and then we'll take a little bit of a test on it, and then we'll actually go and do it and put what we know into use. And then we do, we have certification exams for each of those firefighter one, firefighter two, EMT. They're all certification exams involved with that. So that's how I do a lot of it. But we do formative assessments of them all the time. And when we're actually out working on the truck, uh, I, I, have a, I have a difficult time not saying, hey, what happens if we did this? So how did you guys approach just the day-to-day -day discipline, classroom management? How did that work in the beginning when you're just trying to figure out how to work together? So it's really cool. At the beginning, I was really uncomfortable because I was going into someone else's environment. And I was unsure because I didn't know. I was learning the firefighting side as I was doing the first worksheets and assignments I created. And really, I can really only remember maybe, maybe twice that I had some type of classroom management and he, he's very, been very supportive afterwards when I've been like, hey man, I might overstep my bounds here. Did I maybe get on this person a little bit too much or handle that wrong? And he's like, absolutely not. They should be doing what they're supposed to be doing. Uh, so it's worth mentioning that this whole collaboration happens within simulated workplace. So the students are really employees, the classroom is really a company. How does that simulated workplace context add value to this partnership? We don't, we're a fire department or fire or emergency response agency. We don't have a product. We don't produce a tangible you can hold in your hand. Our service, service to the community is our product. So we set it up like a fire department as much as possible. You know, I'm the chief and then we have captains and we have lieutenants and 
set it up like a fire department. What's your advice to somebody who's maybe considering teaching in a, in a collaborative environment like this? My advice would be to keep an open mind and, and see what happens. Um, like I say, the, the compatibility of the personalities of the people would have to be good. Or you have to forgive them. Yeah, or you have to be very forgiving, right? <laughs> but uh, I think that I think that they should always be open to it because I was, when they first brought it up, I thought, no way. But now that it's, what, three years down the road, we're in our, at the end of our third year. At the end of third. And uh, it's been a great benefit, not only to, um, to the students, but I think it's opened my eyes up to a lot of different possibilities. And I would say definitely go for it. I mean, collaborating can be hard, can be difficult sometimes, but the opportunities that you're presenting to kids yeah, you know, how many times I've had classes where 80% of the kids are just hating the fact that they're in my classroom, and I don't, I don't feel that way at uh, at the technical center because we're getting to work on math through the lens of a CTE program, and those kids are interested, which yeah. is man half the battle. All right, well, we hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like it and share it. And if you want to find out more about what's going on with Simulated Workplace, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll catch you next time.